Hi guys, and welcome to today's task. For today's task, I am going to start framing on this house. We are gonna put the first wall up right against here because I need power in this house sooner than later. So I did hire out my framing and I'm gonna be working with them throughout the duration of this build. But the wall we're gonna do right now is a wall that I want done so that I can set my electrical panel and have outlets inside the house so that we're not just running cords a couple hundred feet. And since we've already pulled our main wire into the house, getting it landed into a box is probably the safest way to do it. And framing out this wall is the first wall of the house that I can do on my own. Since our trusses are going to sit on this concrete groove right here, they have to have a bed made of treated lumber. Any lumber that touches concrete needs to be treated so that the wood will be protected from the moisture the concrete can hold. Our first task is to actually put a piece of treated lumber across this top half. But one of the first things I want to do is clean this off really well so there's no big pebbles or anything like that. And if there's uneven spots, get those as well. Now that we're cleaned off, we can go ahead and put our piece of treated lumber down. Now, I'm just gonna tech screw it for right now, but since it is structurally gonna be underneath the trusses of the house, it does have to have 5H lags just like this, but we can put those in between the trusses later on, which is kind of nice. Because it's on the inside of the house, I don't have to put any kind of foam seal underneath it. That will go on top of this wall because this reaches the exterior. Okay. That's it guys, that's the first piece of timber attached to this house. It's all uphill from here. The board slightly bends back into the house and since I wanna just keep it flush with this outer wall, I'm just gonna put a pry on it a little bit. Top plate. This will be our bottom plate. And in the meantime, we are gonna clean out this corner just a little bit. Now we can throw a tape on, measure out. Should be the same as on top, but you never know. As far as the layout on this wall goes, it's pretty straightforward. We're going from that corner to that corner. It's 130 inches. So we're just gonna lay out 16 on center. The only thing we've gotta take into account is we need a nailer because we're putting the two by four behind this wall, which is technically the first wall. We need a nailer so the sheetrock can line up with it. Let me show you. We bring in our first wall that is gonna go this direction. That's what we're gonna do. But then when we bring in a wall that's gonna go this direction, it's gonna sit like this against it which does allow these two walls to be nailed together, that's not the problem, but sheetrock has nothing to nail to here. So you have to do what you call a California corner, where you, this wall will actually have two studs right there, and then when this one comes against it, you have this corner that creates your nailer. Really, other than that, this is a pretty straightforward wall. No windows, no headers, no nothing, just easy peasy. Now we can start marking out where our studs go. I know I've got one here, but now I know I also have one here that's gonna be our California corner. So X there, X there, but we go our 16 off of this. If you're wondering, a wall standard is typically 16 on center, especially if it's a two by four wall, that's what it'll be. If it's a two by six wall, you can go up to 19.2 or 24 inches on center, just depending on what the engineer calls out. We're gonna go 16 on center for this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 studs. That is a lot of lumber just for a small wall like this. Now we'll just strike our wall. And striking is when you match up your lines. And since we're gonna tip this up this way, I'm gonna keep this as my bottom plate. This is my top plate, but I have to remember 
in that California corner, I have to make sure it's on the bottom of this two by four. So we're gonna write bottom. B O T. B O T. Don't use mechanical pencils. They're fine lines, which is nice for detail, but they're terrible for framing. One, two, three. Here's our studs. I feel like my tools are scattered kind of all over the place. And that's because they technically are. My air compressor's clear over here. My chop saw's over here. Hey, I do have a tripod though. That's good to know. What is super nice though, is having this ranger here to actually move material around. Back right up to the job site. Now we are ready to start cutting some wood. I think something that's super fun about this project at this stage that we're in, it's starting to feel like the meth house project. And if you haven't seen that playlist, I will link it down below if you're new to the channel here. When we did that project, we spent a lot of time just doing demolition for months on end. Then it changed from demolition to construction. And this is the phase that we're finally at on this house. We've never been at demolition really, but we've never been at a place where that construction could be in my hands. Now we're to the point where we're setting up tools and building walls and really bringing things to the house. And that's a cool phase to be at. It is time to start laying out our studs to our wall. And so I know I'm gonna be tipping it up this way, so I'm gonna lay it out that way. And if you don't know, you should always crown your studs and you crown them up that way the entire wall always faces the same way. Luckily these have very little crown in them because they're still pretty fresh, haven't sat long. Now we can actually start nailing. Now I will say you definitely need to watch where your hand placement is because about a month ago, I actually shanked a nail in a top plate, curled up and came into my thumb. Hurts like a mother still. So when it comes to nailing, you definitely want to keep your hand back as far as the nail can reach. Here we go. And because we're using a two by four, you need two nails. If you do a two by six, you actually need three nails. The rule is one nail for every two inches of board. Now we just keep working our way down. A good rule of thumb, always fix your shiners as you're going. If you've got a nail head that's sticking out, didn't sink all the way, fix it right then and there or else Later on, you may forget about it, and then when you go to put your wall up, something may not fit right. So fix them as you go. If you've got a two by four that doesn't really want to cooperate, you can use one of these. Then pivot it around the nail, square it up. This is our wall framed 16 on center with California corners on both ends. So that a wall will come out from here. And obviously a wall comes out from here and runs along for all of this. So I've gone ahead and set a nailer up there and a nailer up there. That way, once we put all the trusses in, I can just nail directly up. We'll put some anchors in the bottom and this thing's not going anywhere, but we're ready to start setting 
our electrical panel in here, which is the main reason I wanted this wall set first. One thing to keep in mind when you're setting this wall though, is you really don't want it to be touching the concrete in the back. My rule of thumb is four inches to the outside of your wall. It helps keep the wood off the cement so it's not picking up moisture from here at all. And I think it gives a little bit of a gap that helps break your insulation barrier. So you guys, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And if you don't wanna miss out on any of the Today's Task projects starting on this house, hit that notification bell. Do it, go do it right now. Hit that notification bell. Until next time, we'll see you later, bye guys. And me starting this front, and me starting this. It's like I knew what I was doing. And me starting this so that it doesn't, so that it, so that it doesn't absorb the moisture that comes in concrete so that it protects the wood. Friggin' measuring tape. Going the opposite direction. Oops.